Welcome back to Dolphins United, the platform for Dolphins. You heard me. We back in the house. All right, on this glorious Tuesday, still feeling amped up about this doggone game, bro. How we came back and won this game is still ridiculous to me. I've been watching everything on YouTube. I mean, like breakdowns, everything, reaction videos, which I'm sure you've seen mine by now. And if you haven't, please go look it up. It's the 40-second 40, 40 clip of how we went bonkers um, for the game. Once again, shout out to my wife for catching that moment. But yeah, uh, for the game winning touchdown. That's, that's what I wanted to say. But anyway, that was a great game. But here's the thing, guys. It's early in the season. We can't hold on to this game like it was game 16, 17 of the year. Anything can go down for the rest of the year and wipe away the feeling we have right now off this game. And what I'm talking about is the feeling about Tua, okay? Uh, we got to keep everything in perspective, understanding that the man just threw six touchdowns and led us back, but the year ain't over. A lot of different things can happen where, you know, this looks like an outlier. Now, we're hoping it's not an outlier. That's what we don't want. But it's too early in the season to know. So right now, we don't have a playoff quarterback. We don't have a Super Bowl quarterback. We don't have a franchise quarterback. Although we're, the needle's moving in that direction more than it was before the game and more than it was at halftime of the game it is now more than it was at the end of the third quarter of the game. Let's be honest. Um, those four touchdowns in the fourth quarter moved the needle from right here to almost a backup quarterback. If the middle would be a, uh, uh, by the way, it's raining. So you're going to hear some thunder possibly pick up in the mic. Sorry about that. It's, uh, raining outside, but if the needle was, if the needle right here is average, the needle for some of us at halftime and in the third quarter was moving this way slightly to backup quarterback. Uh, bus would be down here somewhere. So we were at backup quarterback. Like, we don't really like what we're seeing. Here's average. The needle's now over here somewhere. Down here would be a, a franchise quarterback. The needle's over here somewhere. It's a little past half where we're like, oh, we might have something. But we're not here yet, guys. We're not... We're not where Cincinnati or the Chargers are yet with their quarterback. Now, some of us are there, but I'm talking about as, an, as a franchise, we're not there yet. So we just have to woo-saw a little bit, all right, you know, and take everything in stride and let this thing play out because I believe good things can, will happen, but we don't know for sure because it's week two. Tua right now is the uh, tie for the leader and... Um, touchdowns with seven. He's top five in passer rating in QBR. He's leading the league in uh, passer um, passing yards and passing yards per game at like 360, by the way. These are all great numbers. All right. Third down uh, 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 passer rating is through the roof. Uh, fourth quarter. Passer rating through the roof, but now poor fourth quarter. If you know a little bit about the statistics, Tua has been good in the fourth quarter the last year and a half. So that's not nothing new, okay? And if you want to fight me on that, please go look it up because I, I know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm not just here talking. Tua has been a fourth quarter, uh, fourth quarter quarterback. Matter of fact. I'll put it like this for you, and some of you are going to be like, huh? Tua in the fourth quarter in his career is better than everybody else. His fourth quarter metrics in his career, touchdown percentage, first down percentage, passer rating in the fourth quarter, uh, uh, sack in the fourth quarter, all of these things combined is the stuff of legend for, for, for quarterbacks. In 
um, his career, okay? So he's a beast when it comes to fourth quarter production. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he's a franchise quarterback yet. It just, it just doesn't. All right, so we got to wait and see. We got to give this thing time. And, and all of the stuff that he's leading at right now and uh, being one of the top quarterbacks after two weeks, it's all predicated on or it all happened because of a great fourth quarter. Without that fourth quarter, we're not talking about Tua being one of the uh, uh, um, better quarterbacks in the league stat-wise right now. So, I mean, and he did it. He did it. All right. And for those that are going to say, well, you know, busted coverage. I heard that a few times. Busted coverage. That was two touchdowns to Tyreek Hill. Take Tyreek Hill's two touchdowns away. All right. 48 yards, 60 yards. Take that away. What do you have? 350 yards, four touchdowns. That's what you got. That's still great. Doesn't win you the game, but it's great. That's all. I'll take it. I'll take it. You're going to tell me two is going to throw for 350 and four touchdowns, two picks? I'll take it. He did that against the Vikings last year. Not Vikings, Falcons last year. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay? So, either way, that's good to me. He threw six, all right? You can call it busted coverage, but I know uh, um, plenty of times last year, all right, where we were pointing out guys that were wide open down the sideline on busted coverage that Tua didn't hit. It happened. Plenty of times. All right? Go look at all of TD's previous, um, from last year, previous uh, film breakdowns. He could probably show you two or three or four times where guys were, per game, guys wide open on a sideline or, or open in the NFL anyway. All right? Some of them were straight busted coverages. But open in the NFL, Tua didn't even look that way. Missed an opportunity to throw touchdowns. That's the difference. This year, those busted coverages, he's hitting them. We can't be mad at that, all right, because there's going to be busted coverage a lot of weeks. When you're dealing with Tyreek Hill, there's going to be some busted coverages, okay? We just got to hit those guys. Now, it might not always be Tyreek Hill running down the sideline on those busted coverages, but because he demands, and now at this point, Waddle is going to demand so much attention, somebody's bound to be running down the field wide open. We just got to hit them. All right, might not always be Tyreek Hill, but you got Gasicki that might be running wide open one time. You got Cedric that can run wide open, Sherfield that can run wide open, Craycraft that can run wide open, Moster that can run wide open, Edmonds that, that can run my, um, wide open. When Tanner Con um, Connor comes back, he can run wide open. You get the point, all right? Anybody could be wide open at any time. Smythe could be wide open down the sideline at any time because of the amount of attention that they're going to have to pay to those two wide receivers, Okay. We just got to hit him. And Tua hit Tyreek Hill twice on busted plays. We'll take it. We'll take I mean, it's part of the, fo it's part of the football game. So we're going to take those. All right, I'm, I'm going to be happy with it. Six touchdowns. That's... Uh, Burrow has never thrown six touchdowns in a game. Herbert has never thrown six touchdowns in a game. Are they better than Tua right now? Right now, I would venture to say Herbert, no. Not Herbert. Burrow, no. Okay? But Herbert, yes, of course. But they still have never done it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like 469 yards is a great thing against Baltimore because I looked up the stats, and Burrow last year threw for 400 yards and 500 yards against that same defense. At the end of the season, he threw for five-something, five touchdowns. He was wheeling and dealing against them, okay? It was great, okay? Five-something, 500-something yards, five tutties against that same defense. And he killed them for 400 and something the first time he played them last year. So the defense is a little overrated at this point if you thought they were a good defense because passing um, um, against the pass because they're not that good against the pass. Burrow cooked them twice. Last year, 400-something yards, 500-something yards, all right? And then Tua just cooked them for 200 yards in the fourth quarter, four touchdowns. So take it at what you will. Their defense, it was, it was bound to happen at some point, 
okay, it was bound to happen at some point in the game because their pass defense just is suspect. It's just suspect, right? And it doesn't take anything away from Tua because you still got to make the yardage. You still got to throw the ball. You still got to make the right reads. But their passing defense is suspect as Burrow last year threw for that many yards against them, over 900 yards against them in two games, okay? So, granted, he was, he was on one last year. He was having a great year. This year, not so much, but, you know, he was – and I – Told my family, all right, that Burrow, I don't believe that he's going to have the same type of year he had last year. I believe that he's going to take a step back, and lo and behold, early, but he's taking a step back right now. And the offensive line is not helping out, but he has weapons, okay? But he's not helping himself as well with the offensive line. Tua wasn't getting sacked 13 times in two games. Like, that's not happening because of pocket presence, because of getting the ball out fast. Burrow's going to need to do some of these things, okay? He, he, I know he has PTSD from the injury he had his first year being knocked around so much, but he's going to have to get rid of the football. So he, he's got to be a little bit better. He's got to take a page out of Tua football and, and get rid of that football a little faster because Tua is not getting sacked 13 times with a bad offensive line. We had the worst offensive line. He wasn't getting sacked 13 times in two games. That wasn't happening, okay? So... Burrow has got to be better. There. That's already a place where uh, two is better as a quarterback when it comes to being in the pocket. Pocket presence and avoiding sacks, two is better than Burrow. Plain and simple. All right, uh, but I wanted to just bring everybody back down with this video, okay? Bring everybody back down. Not that you can't be uh, um, happy or that you don't have – high expectations and you feel like Tua is finally meeting them or Tua is finally proving you right, that's cool. But let's not, you know, get ahead of ourselves. It's week two that we just finished with. Week three resets everything, all right? We got to go 1-0 to finish out this week, and it's going to be a tough one because we have the bullies the big bad wolf of the division coming in our house to try and beat us and move to 3-0 and and put us at 2-1 and so they could be <coughs> the top team in the division. Right now they're sitting in second place because we have a division win and they don't. If you think that they're worried about us, we got another thing coming. We need to be worried about the Buffalo Bills because they're going to look at that game and they're going to say, well, I mean, that was the Ravens. We're up 14, uh, uh, um, 21 points in the fourth quarter. We're not losing that game, and rightfully so. Who knows? They're probably not losing that game up 35-14 going into the fourth quarter. They're probably not. Let's be honest, all right? They're probably looking at it like that. Well, they were getting smoked, and if that was us, we wouldn't let up like that, and we wouldn't allow them. So they're not worried about us. Trust me, they're not. They're they're not worried about us like that because they know that we were losing in that game and we made a miraculous comeback. Now, should they be worried about us? They should be worried about us because we have the weapons to do what we did. 28 points in a quarter. We have the weapons to make that happen again. All right, but they have the defense to not let that happen. So that's where, you know, things are going to get interesting on Sunday. Now, I'll give predictions. And then um, I said before the season that I was going to talk about the recipe to maybe beating this team uh, and being that we're 2-0 and is something worth talking about. So we're going to go ahead and talk about it on Friday, Saturday, where I give the blueprint on how we can possibly beat the Buffalo Bills, although it's not going to be easy no matter what recipe or no matter what strategy I bring forth. Uh, but still, I'll, I'll, I'll present it. And then we'll see what happens on Sunday. But there is a recipe where I feel like if we do this, we give ourselves the best chance to finally beat them for the first time in I don't know how many years, since 2018, I believe. So we have a lot of work to do. We need to be prepared for the Bills. We need to put up our best efforts against them if we have a chance to win this game because it's not going to be one of those where we're blowing this team out. All right, and even if we get up 21-7 to 7 on them or something like that, they have the ability to do to us what we did to the Ravens. 
all right? So we need to focus on that, all right? This game, let's put it behind us, and let's focus on the Bills as fans, okay? And give them the utmost... Uh, um, utmost attention, all right? Let's give them the utmost attention that they deserve because we're going to need the best game of our defense and our offense's lives so we can pull this win out. When it comes to Tua, love what we saw, but we need to see it again because it's uh, what have you done for me lately? We're not going to be in week 14, um, and we're 5 and 12, and we're talking about, oh, man, I'm 5 and 12. Boy, that was, that was horrible math. Um, that's not what I meant there at all. The math ain't mathing at all. There would be 13 games or 12 games to that point. So 5 and 7, okay, 5 and 7, and... We're looking at, you know, week two like, man, you know, that was a great game. No, we're going to be five and seven looking like, bro, we might need to try and find another quarterback. You see what I'm saying? It's early. Yes, we can take this win, but just like the the players are doing, we're not going to do 24 hours, but we could do 48 hours, all right? We let that game go after 48 hours and we move our attention over to Buffalo because we need... The same thing again from two and eight. Not six touchdowns, but we need good quarterback play like you did in the fourth quarter against Buffalo. So we give ourselves a good chance to win that game. All right. And I don't know what my math was on. Math wasn't mathing. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but let's do that, guys. Let's do that. Let's put move our attention over to the Buffalo Bills. Give our team that energy that it needs. All right, so we can try to pull this win out because, boy, we're going to need it. We're, we're going to need it. Uh, you saw them on Monday night. If you saw them on Monday night, you watched that game, you saw that there's nothing they can't do at this point. They did whatever they wanted. If they want to run, they'll run. If they want to pass, they'll pass. They got it deep. They have it on crossers. They have it on screens. They have the short game, the intermediate, third and 16. They're converting. Third and three, they're always converting. Uh, whatever they want. Defensively, they get in the backfield. They stop the run. You can't pass deep on them because they're keeping the safeties back. Safety's a beast at that. Uh, even with rookie cornerbacks, doesn't matter. They're killing it. This team is a well-oiled machine. We're going to need to bring our A game, that fourth quarter game. All right, and we can't um, state enough how the defense played in the second half of this game, all right? If they bring that same intensity they brought in the second half, we give ourselves a chance. Give ourselves a chance. Now, I know how we can also give ourselves a more chance, but you're not going to hear that till Saturday, or Friday, Saturday, all right, when I put out that video. But with that being said, let's move our for attention forward. Let's move our attention forward. I'll highlight y'all in the next one. Y'all already know what it is. Fins up till we die. Just wanted to talk to y'all real quick, all right? So I don't even know what I'm going to title this video, but you'll already have seen the title by then. But just wanted to talk to y'all, bring everything back down. Let's refocus and let's try to beat the Buffalo Bills. Now, if he goes crazy against the Buffalo Bills, everybody, <laughs> we might have something here. I'll holla at y'all.